Treyarch has finally spoken up about the updates they're working on leading into the launch of Black Ops 6 on October 25th. They compiled all of the data gathered from the beta and took it all into consideration when updating maps, spawns, performance, weapons, and movement. But are they doing enough in these areas to make the game the best it can be? Let's dive deep into what Treyarch have been working on going into launch. Maps. I'm going to briefly touch on the maps here as I'm going to delve further into this in another video. Treyarch has confirmed that the beta maps of Babylon, Derelict, Skyline, Scud, and Rewind were trending on the smaller size in terms of the full Black Ops 6 map pool, and that the majority of the maps will actually be medium sized. They also noted that they've taken competitive into consideration when designing maps, which is something they say every year, so I hope this is true, and honestly, I trust Treyarch when they say they're taking competitive into play. To close this section out, they noted that they're evaluating some changes to cover placement across multiple maps, including some of the beta maps. They didn't provide any further detail, but I'm assuming they're talking primarily about the Scud power position. Either way, this is great news for all of us. Before we move on, if you want more Black Ops 6 content, be sure to hit that like button and also subscribe. It's completely free. Spawns. This is one of the most important parts of having a beta, being able to analyze spawns and pinpointing exactly where the problems lie for spawns. I mostly played during weekend two of the beta and barely had any questionable spawns, so I already believe that the spawns were in a pretty decent spot, uh, which is fantastic because we all know the spawns have been pretty touch and go the last few years. Hopefully they gathered enough data on the bad spawn side of things and can nail that down before launch. Performance. Granted, it was a beta, but I did experience a lot of hitching and packet burst during it. At times, I thought it was improving, and then BAM, my screen would freeze again. I trust that the game will be ready performance-wise come launch. They didn't release a lot of information regarding the performance, other than that they've already made improvements resolving script errors, in-game UI, and asset streaming. That last one is interesting to me because they've recently made this a mandatory feature. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised for those of us with bad internet if that was the cause of some of the in-game issues. All in all, I thought performance-wise the game played and looked great for a majority of the two weekends. Headshot damage. Most of us know that Black Ops 6 did not have a headshot multiplier unless you had the high caliber attachment on. This made it very difficult to rip people off of head glitches, specifically the one on Scud. Treyarch are looking into this and are working on adjustments to the weapons to reward players who hit multiple headshots during an engagement. They don't want this to affect the consistency of time to kill, so I doubt any significant changes will be happening in this area. If you want headshot multipliers, run high caliber. Bullet Penetration Bullet penetration is something they're looking to improve for launch. Players should notice fewer extreme cases of bullets doing far too much damage through certain services, while also not penetrating through others. And they specifically noted the Scud satellite here, so I'm guessing they're going to make that wall bangable at launch. Some more specific changes coming to weapons that they didn't elaborate on are improvements to fluidity of sniper ADS, Improved fluidity when swapping weapons during sprint and tack sprint. Reduction of weapon motion during crouch transitions. And a small lift to shotguns and targeting adjustments across all weapons to keep SMGs from overperforming relative to other classes. It seems like weapon balance is a top priority here, so for all of you Jackal users out there, say bye bye to your crutch. Movement. Omni movement was the highlight of the beta, and it is extremely fun to use. I can't believe it took Call of Duty this long to implement something like this. Well, actually I can not believe it, but that's a whole other topic. They are adamant on making the movement as fluid and balanced as possible. Some changes of note are continued improvements to animation fluidity. Basically what people were seeing their enemy do in third person wasn't always accurate of what was happening in first person. So they're working on getting that as close to matching as possible. Adjustments to slide for improved predictability and fluidity. They found a nice middle ground between going into supine during a slide. Reduce the minimum time to slide after sprinting to prevent dead slides. And a slight reduction to slide duration. 
They also uh, made some adjustments to intelligent movement. Um, I didn't use this feature, but I could definitely see it being of use to people who really dive into its capabilities. Treyarch also provided a list of smaller details that the team's been working on. Uh, starting with the winner's circle, uh, there's a shortened the overall duration of the winner's circle uh, to reduce emote spam, which was very prevalent. Players in the winner's circle can only issue one emote. I don't know if this is good or bad. I don't emote spam, so it doesn't affect me either way. Uh, they simplified the emote menu to make it easier to activate emotes. Overall, none of this affects me very much. Um, none of it affects anyone except for the people who love to emote spam. So for those guys, I'm sorry. Kill counter. One of the best features in COD nowadays is the kill counter. This is being added to our HUD to make it easy to track those nuke streaks. Camera motion reduced the overall camera motion on sprint, tax sprint, and slide. Kill order. They are taking kill order out of the game. No, I'm just kidding. But that mode was not fun. Increase kills as HVT team score to 3. That's good to know. I didn't even know what it was before. Reduced HVT survival score to 20. This is good. It'll make it harder for the HVT to streak. Increased score limit to 150. HVT will no longer drop their pistol. And improved notification when a player is selected as HVT. Which I actually didn't think was a problem, but I could definitely see people missing that for sure. Sleeper Agent. Remove the time added when earning eliminations while Sleeper Agent is active. Although this is a small update, it's still a big W. I feel like Sleeper Agent was a little too good. Equipment changes. Stimshot has been changed from an inventory based item to a cooldown based item. So we're not going to be able to spam Stimshots anymore. I do use Stimshot, but I kind of like this. Stimshot spam is never good. It ruins the consistency of gunfights and honestly kind of ruined Black Ops 4 multiplayer for me. They also resolved an issue where the combat axe would not deal damage at the start of a match. I can't even believe this was a thing. Spawn protection from a throwing axe is absolutely insane. Good change. Perks. Not a lot to go on here. Um, Assassin and Bruiser are being moved from perk 1 to perk 2. Dexterity and Gung Ho are being moved from perk 2 to perk 1. I like this change, it should lead to more diversity in everyone's perk packages. Um, RCXD controls are now updated to the classic view, um, and detonate has been swapped from R2 to R1 for those of us on controller, so no more accidental blowups of the RCXD. There you have it, that's everything the team has been working on. Is it enough? Honestly, yes. The fact that they're even telling us this early on is a great sign of things to come. Call of Duty is at its best when the developers are open and transparent. The communication should be constant, and they should be happy to provide us with the updates and changes that they're working on to make the game better. I'm personally excited for all the changes that were mentioned and think all of them are positive for the game. What do you guys think? Is this enough? What changes are you most excited about? Let me know in the comments, and if you're still here, hit that subscribe button.